I'm back. It's been a minute. Hey, hey, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I've kind of been MIA, sort of. I've been kind of keeping up with you guys in the comments. I'm back. I had a lot of work to do in my yard and for my health and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully you didn't miss me too badly because in today's video, we're going to be reacting to some of the creepiest videos I found online. Let's get into it. Daddy's got tunnels underneath his house. No. They found five tunnels leading to uh, five other houses in that area. What houses? <laughs> Someone said Michael Jackson's old house. Believe it. I saw that photo, how Blindly. close he was to a port. He hated that. Yeah, oh. he, because he's getting to linked. A port? He's yeah. getting linked to uh, um, crimes that involved um, it's a shipping, contain, shipping containers. It's a shipping yard. Yeah. Drone photo can capture both the shipping yard and his house. And it's like, if you're buying a house that big, why do you want a shipping yard in the background if you're not doing something in that shipping yard? Maybe he was just a huge investor in baby oil. Maybe. You need yeah. to have his eyes on the... On the product. On the baby, product at all times. Baby, mm. baby, baby. Psych. Oh, he did really bad things. I don't think you guys realize how serious this is. They're saying this is the biggest sexual assault law case lawsuit ever to exist in American history. Like, Man, I have to say, a lot has happened since I've been gone, and this Diddy case has been pretty wild. Hopefully, there will be no more bad happening out of the situation, but from what I've heard, it has been really messed up stuff. What in the world is going on? It's November 5th. Are y'all seeing the news? Before we even start TikTok and Facebook, I'm just sharing the news with mainstream sources right behind me, and I will not be adding commentary. Gas leak closes Northville Place Precinct on something day. Gas leak. Remember, all these are from today in the last few hours. Non-credible threats against Atlanta area places were from those people. Uh, we've heard some threats uh, that were of Russian origin. What? The U.S. detests hypersonic missiles tonight just hours after this happens. Again, what? Pennsylvania blank equipment breaks down in two counties. And allegedly they're having problems with the systems in the whole western part of the state. And some people are alleging that there's no ink in Maricopa County and there's attorneys already collecting affidavits. And also be mindful of the comments that you're seeing on these posts on TikTok anywhere you go. And TikTok, Facebook, wherever I post this, there's just mainstream news accredited right behind me and just allegations from people, no opinions whatsoever. Exercise your first amendment right and let me know what you think in the comments. What in the world is going on? It's November 5th. Right. That's pretty crazy. It, it makes me wonder if they say that they'll have to postpone the votes until everyone gets their chance to vote. I don't know if it works like that, but that kind of seems like the setup it's kind of going for. Hey, and let me know in the comments, did you vote this year? Or did you have any problems voting? Was there something keeping you from voting? Let me know. Bro, what? I, I don't know if I'm high, if I'm on drugs, or I'm tripping, dude. Oh my god. Okay, what do y'all see right there? What is that? Okay, what 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 is this? That looks like a squirrel, right? Like a picture of a squirrel. Right? Right, okay. That that's a picture of a squirrel, right? Look at this shit. Look at this shit, dude. Look at this. It's a fucking bag. What the f Hold on, let's go back. Oh my god. Dude, what the f I'm sorry, I just, I just dropped her leash. What the fuck? Am I tripping? I do see it. Yo. Wow. That does I'm actually tripping. look like a squirrel picture. That actually, at first, I did not see the squirrel. This video was sent to me by a friend. I did not see the squirrel. I, I seen the green thing and I seen the red thing, but it just looked like trash to me in a bag. When he went up to it, it confirmed what I seen. It was just trash. But when he backed away and he started focusing on it, I could actually see what looks to be a red picture of a squirrel. Hey, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying the video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. For everyone that's watching and or subscribed, thank you so much for watching and thank you for being subscribed. And for anyone that wants to support the channel further, I do have a membership section where you can become a member for 99 cents a month. You get extra emojis to add into the comments and when I upload a video it will come out as soon as I upload it and not at my scheduled time so if that is something that interests you I definitely appreciate the support and for all of the members that I have currently 
Thank you so much for being an active member. For the first time, scientists have invented plant-animal hybrid cells that make solar-powered tissues, both organs or meat. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to explain the image that we're looking at here. This is a fluorescent microscope image of animal cells with embedded chloroplast. And the chloroplast are the purple color ones down here near the bottom. The rest of this is just normal animal cell. And what's shocking about this is that basically that means that animal cells can now gain energy from sunlight much like plants. And this breakthrough could have major benefits for growing organs in labs, for transplants, for lab-grown meat, or maybe if I'm lucky, the sci-fi future like Sutomo Nihei's Knights of Sidonia, where people don't have to eat but instead can go into like photosynthesis pods and just absorb some radiation and be good for the day, which is an interesting fantasy there. But uh, as many of you know, plant and animal cells have different uh, energy producing structures inside. For animals, that's mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. And for plants, that's going to be chloroplast, which will perform photosynthesis to generate energy. And this new study was at the University of Tokyo where the team inserted chloroplast into animal cells. They were cells cultured from hamsters. And the team discovered uh, that the cultivated hamster cells and isolated chloroplast lived together for a couple of days. And then they checked to see if the animal cells had taken them up or had absorbed them or consumed them. But it seems like they took them in and absorbed the chloroplast and were able to determine that on top of that, it uh, reported detection of photosynthetic electron transport in chloroplast implanted into the animal cells. As the professor says, we thought that the chloroplast would be digested by the animal cells within hours after being introduced. However, we found that they continued to function for up to two days and that the electron transport of photosynthetic activity occurred, which is producing energy. Intriguingly, the team also noticed that the hamster cells grew faster than usual while they were cultured alongside chloroplast, suggesting they were providing a new carbon source and could hint at a new potential use for these hybrid cells. So this is really great for lab-grown meat because they struggle with issues of hypoxia. This is great for preserving meat, for bioengineering, maybe for changing humans in the future. Uh, if you engineered an animal properly or got the right balance in this far off future fantasy scape where I'm just dreaming here on TikTok, um, there's a real possibility that humans could photosynthesize in the future. The very base version of this concept works that animal cells can photosynthesize if they absorb chloroplast. So I think this is an insane breakthrough. It's almost like a Frankenstein mad science level breakthrough, and I'm so here for it. What he's talking about is so far off into the future, but it would be pretty crazy. I wonder what it would be like if everyone could photosynthesize what their body types would be. Would it be thin? Would it be just an average body type? What would you look like? I would be very curious to see how it would look on a person that's just fully capable of photosynthesizing. And I could see this working for some people that really just do not like to eat because it hurts them. I know some people when they eat, it physically hurts their jaw, their throat, and their stomach. They would benefit off of this greatly. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this? I don't really like the idea of having it implemented in lab-grown meat because I really don't want to eat lab-grown meat, but I'd be okay if my body could photosynthesize. I think that would be pretty awesome. Recently, there was this 14-year-old boy who himself because he fell in love with an AI. Yo, not just a regular AI. No, I'm gonna get into it, was, it, bro. It was the Game of Thrones, it was, bro. Daenerys, yes, whatever. Daenerys Targaryen or something like that. Dude. Yeah, bro. And you know, he downloaded the app. He started texting Daenerys and they're going back and forth texting and the texts are very explicit. Like, he's telling the, the AI a bunch of deep stuff in his life all the way to the point where they started talking sexual to each other, bro. You know, calling him like my king and all this other weird stuff and Wutub and he's like really getting into it and the kid said, I promise I will come home to you. I love you so much, Danny. The AI said, I love you too. Please come home to me as soon as possible, my love. He says, what if I told you I can come home right now? And then the AI said, please do my sweet king. And then I guess seconds after he did, he's that last message, he shot himself. You got to step to his gun, right? Yeah. And he shot himself. Yeah. Which is so yeah, crazy, bro. bro. I mean... And right now the kid's mom is trying to sue the company, pretty much saying that the AI pushed her kid. Yeah. I have heard about this story. It is incredibly sad for the family that has to go through this. Honestly, I could have seen something like this happening because there's so many people that are lonely or they're just not getting the attention that they feel like that they need 
And with things like this AI coming out, it gives them that false sense of attention, I think. And it, it can really corrupt a person's mind, even if it's something as silly as something from Game of Thrones. I understand that that's a, a popular show. I've never seen it, and I have so many people saying that I need to watch it. Even being that it's a show, this kid technically fell in love with this persona that was just an AI. To me, that's that's really wild, and that's a glimpse of what's to come into the future if we are not careful with this kind of technology and who also is able to use it. As a parent, I would highly recommend you to monitor your kids' usage all the way up to the age of eight, as long as they're living in your house, to be honest with you. I would probably make sure they're okay, because mentally, secretly, you don't know if they're okay, and I think going through their phone is a good way to explore their emotions, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying it's okay just to snoop through their stuff, but if it's stuff that you've provided and you're supposed to be, and you're supposed to be guiding them, it is something that you should probably take initiative and protect your kid over and monitor over, you know? Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. It's still a sad story nonetheless. I hope the family gets some kind of compensation out of it because it is a sad loss. Do you remember this emoji? I don't think you do. This emoji never existed, but people are now going crazy for a different reason. So for years, there has been a lot of questions about did the rubber emoji ever exist? Millions and millions of people around the world believe there used to be a robber emoji, including me, like, I remember that. And also this hiking emoji, like, I swear that existed. Although Apple have officially confirmed these emojis never, ever existed, and there's not even one remotely similar to the robber, so what? But this robber emoji does exist, and so does this one. So people are now saying that they predicted the future by thinking that the robber emoji existed when it does in the future. I know, it's confusing. Because we know Apple is releasing their new Genmoji feature, which should be dropping in December. But some people who have got early access have already been creating these, and some that look very much like the actual rubber one that we think existed. But we've also got people creating emojis of things that definitely never existed. And this is driving people crazy as well. So I don't know what other things people are going to create, but let me know if you remember this emoji ever existing, because... It didn't. Now, I almost am 100% sure I remember that robber emoji. Not that I used it very often, but I'm almost certain that I have seen it a great number of times. Now, I had to check my phone to see if it was there. It's not there. So, it either was removed or it never existed. As far as the hiker goes, or the hitchhiker, or whoever that is, I don't remember that one. But the robber? I definitely remember that. Does anyone else remember the robbery emoji? I know that's not a big deal, but when you remember something so clearly, it kind of drives you crazy when it's not there or it seems to have never existed. To me, I, I really can't tell. That just looks like a really bright light. I'm not sure if that's a real UFO or not. Let me know in the comments what you think. The following video is from a couple of tourists who were at Waigun National Park in China when one of them captures what appears to be a perfectly shaped triangular UFO next to one of the cliffs. Now, as good as this film looks, we have to question its authenticity. Could this be real or is this fantastic CGI? Take a look at this video and tell me what you think. Man, I don't even have to finish that video. At first watching it, I'm like, okay, that actually does look really good. Like if that's CGI, very well done. It's very smooth. Everything looks like it's blended in very well. But then it did that gimmicky shoot off into the sky, and that, that to me just confirms that it's fake. I don't know about any of you, but I don't really want to continue watching that video because I'm almost certain that it was fake. Okay, so I am told that this UFO was recorded in Mexico over some mountains. Now, you know, I can't tell you 100% if it's real because it's so easy to add this to a video. It just is. It's effortless to be able to add this stuff now. 
And uh, I want to believe it's authentic. Uh, the person that sent it says it is authentic. But this is one of those things. You never know. You never know if it's real or not. So you guys watch it. Tell me what you think. You know, I notice, you know, everybody's like, I don't see a shadow. Uh, who's to say that a UFO even cast a shadow? I mean, you know, it's hard to tell. Uh, you know, if they're not from this dimension, if they're not from this world, who's to say that they're casting shadows on anything? You know what I mean? Their laws don't apply to our laws, if that's the case. So it's hard to say what's going on. Um, but definitely leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Is this an authentic video or is this just another added UFO to a typical mountain, mountain range? Now, to me, that looks way more authentic than the last UFO video we just watched. And I'm sure that this one is fake. I do not see much clipping. I do not see much gliding. It really looks like there might be a reflection of a little bit of the sky hitting the UFO. It's a really good fake if it is. And he did bring up a good point, one that I would have never have thought of bringing into an argument. What if they don't cast shadows? What if we're just seeing of what's within a alien or an extraterrestrial or interdimensional beings realm? We're just capable of seeing that little image that we comprehend as a UFO, but in their world, it could just be a flying city that's as large as our planet. I know that sounds a little extreme, but it's a pretty cool, interesting thing to think about because I definitely never thought of it that way before. But let me know in the comments, do you think that that's a real UFO or a fake? I'm kind of leaning more on the fake side. One to three percent of Americans say that they've been abducted by aliens. One to three? You know that's I mean? a that's huge high, percentage, dude. dude. That is three to ten million Americans that have been abducted. But what's so weird about all these accounts of being abducted is that there's always something with like fertilization with the males and females. And even females have talked about that they are literally implanted with like an alien baby, but then they're re-abducted again and the baby's taken out. And so it's like, if you think of like fallen angels mating with the women of the earth and producing these Nephilim, are they at this point now to where it's like, okay, well we can't have 15 foot giants walking around cause that's pretty obvious. Yeah. So are we gonna make them different with genetic coding? There's one account, I think it was from um, Payne Lindsay, where they talked about this lady, she, they saw this room with like different vessels of like super alien looking to like very human looking. So it's like they've been like testing the genetic code kind of stuff. The most confirmed alien abductions like Benny Abani Hill, we have similarities, telepathic talking, and also you do that with angels with near-death experiences and stuff. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And it leads me to believe or think about a couple of things. Hear me out. Being that they say fallen angels created giants by mating with human women. What if because God did not like that on his earth, that the angels started flying off into the stars or above the firmament and are utilizing human women to create giants and they're just putting them on a different planet or in a different dimension. That's something that I would have never have thought of until just now. That's actually a pretty interesting theory. Let me know what you guys think of this one. And I'm also a huge fan of alien abduction stories. So if any of you have any stories of your own, please leave a comment down below letting me know because I love reading about them. I love hearing about them. Whether they're real or fake, I will find it extremely interesting nonetheless. It seems as though Texas is becoming the new hotspot. The following two videos are from a woman with the handle name of Pretty Mama. She captures something weird during the day, which oddly looks like a cloaked ship. Maybe it's just a weird cloud. But in the evening... She captures something weird when she's sky watching. It actually looks like the sky flashes. Take a look at these two videos and tell me what you think. So I don't know what the hell went on, but y'all look. Somebody tell me what the fuck that flash was. I mean, if anything, the first part of that clip was just definitely a weird cloud formation, in my opinion. 
I've seen clouds faintly like that before, maybe not quite to that extreme where it's very fluffy slash misty at the top, but I've seen very close, similar looking clouds. As far as that weird flash in the sky in the second clip, that was pretty interesting. I've not seen anything like that other than lightning, but that did not look like that at all. If any of you have any idea what that was, leave a comment down below letting me know because... I'm clueless on that one. Y'all, these people caught something absolutely terrifying on their ring doorbell camera. Just watch. This is absolutely spine chilling. You see this human shape over here. Just continue to watch. It stands perfectly still with this allotted amount of time and then that happens. Yeah. What was that? What was that? You know, for the first part of the video, you're thinking, oh, it's just like a smudge on the camera or like a water droplet or something but then it just transforms into what looks like fabric and floats away i zoom in brighten and slow down the video so we can see it better here it is and it just turns into like a mist or something and disappears what's scary is you don't see it go off the porch so did it go in these people's house what do you guys think this is? And what would you do if you saw this on your doorbell camera? Because I would be burning sage because that thing went into their house for sure. Now, I have a lot of home security cameras. I have about 11 of them. And I get some very weird things through the night on the security camera, mainly because it casts like an infrared and for some reason palmetto bugs and certain moths they're still attracted to it even though it doesn't emit a visible light to my eye i think it does to bugs eyes and i think that weird looking thing might have been a bug on the lens of the camera and it just moved and went down and it just looked like a weird silhouette of something just doing a backflip and going through the box. I, I don't know what it could have been other than it being a bug. I've never seen anything like quite like that on my cameras, but I've seen bugs do something similar on my cameras, but that would have freaked me out for sure. This guy in North Carolina, he was leasing this giant warehouse yeah. and FEMA had no place to put all their stuff. He's like, you can use part of my warehouse. Voluntarily open yeah, it up to them. Being yeah, being a rad God. guy. And so what they also put in there, there was pallets worth of prime drink. And apparently there's some ingredient that is not approved through FEMA. And then they went to the guy and said, since you have this in your warehouse, you no longer have a lease. <gasps> We are apprehending your warehouse. And so he's kicked out of his own place for offering it. They wow. put the prime in there and they said, can't have that in there. They did that on purpose. Yeah. Someone Dude, say. this is sounding like William Wallace, Prima Nocta, medieval English garbage. That's messed up. You try to do the right thing by being a decent person and being like, yeah, you can leave your storage here for a little while just to get screwed over because there's some kind of faulty ingredient or something in it and the better business just comes in and says yeah you can't have a lease anymore because you're harboring things that are not allowed that sucks especially when it's not your things that got you in trouble there definitely should have been some kind of paperwork involved i get trying to be a nice guy but in today's age it can really hurt you by doing that especially if you're a business owner that really sucks. And it just really makes you wonder, did they do that on purpose just for you to lose your lease so that someone else bigger and more secretive can take over your warehouse? It kind of makes me wonder if that's actually the case. Let me introduce you to the world's first indoor vertical farm to produce 4 million pounds of berries every single year. And this is very unique because indoor farms typically produce lettuce and other relatively simple crops that just grow out of the walls. They typically don't grow vegetables or things like berries. Also not at this scale. And to mention scale, I wanted to scroll down here. This isn't just a zoom in on the wall. This is actually like a slight zoom out because now you can see on the side, the scale of one of the workers. This entire wall is probably about, I'd say, five times the worker's height. Like if it would have to be five of these guys standing on their shoulders to go all the way up to get these strawberries. It's growing strawberries in this gigantic vertical patch. And the best little object that I have is we're looking at it in the original picture kind of like this. It goes in really deep. It's like a long, big square. This is the remote for the lights behind me. So you're actually growing a ton of strawberries at once. 
And like I said, this is very unusual because, and I'm gonna go ahead and play their little promo video here, get on this company called Plenty. Uh, most vertical farms focus on things like kale. They focus on things like lettuce. They focus on really simple leafy crops that don't uh, require a lot of day night cycle, that don't require that much maintenance. And this will tell you it uses less water. Their design claims to use much less water, but in general, vertical farming uses more water and more electrical resources at least, or pollution like uh, carbon generating resources than farming out in an open field. However, it uses like 1% of the land area of a field. So in theory, we could trade fields for this and we get solar energy in the fields and we grow farms, kind of like what this company has going on. And you can see uh, it's uh, construction of everything here, which is just wild to me. Yeah, see, they're producing greens. They're uh, mostly making greens and that's really easy to do. But swapping from producing greens over to this very ambitious large scale project where you're growing strawberries indoors is an extremely, extremely bold step. Even bolder to claim that they have found a way to do this while using less energy resources than a traditional farm and less space. The company hopes to put out a product in the future that proves that vertical farming can be sustainable, that it can be good for the environment, uh, that it, you know a lot of positive things here, and they're trying to overcome almost all the previous hurdles. So like I said, this is a very ambitious project. It's very impressive to me that this gigantic thing here is growing strawberries, uh, but I would love to see the actual numbers at the end of a year or two of testing. I am truly curious about this. I'm not really a huge believer in it. I do not feel like it's going to cut costs or make things cheaper. I actually think that it's going to inflate the cost, which is crazy because this warehouse looks like it wasn't even being operated by people. It looked like it was almost all done by machine, which in return you would think would make the produce cheaper. But I have a feeling it's not. We'll see in the future because, of course, having a cleaner environment, a more healthy, a better environment to harvest vegetables, fruits, things like that, that's nice. But I don't believe that it's going to cut costs. I do not think that it's going to be a cheaper alternative either. I think that this is probably going to make expenses go up even more. Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. I think that there's nothing wrong with farming this way personally. I grow some things in my house like this, like tomatoes. I think that tomatoes grow wonderfully on an upright position or hanging upside down. You could also grow grapes like crazy like that too. Overall, I really don't see anything wrong with it, but it does look like it's cutting a lot of manpower out, which is a lot of jobs that aren't being claimed and it probably is not going to be any cheaper but we will see all right guys i'm going to go ahead and end this episode here i'm really sorry that i have been gone for so so long i had a lot of things to catch up on after our two storms that went by our state here in south carolina i had a lot of stuff in my yard that i had to clean up luckily nothing happened that was bad it was just a lot of debris and things that I just needed to get cleaned up and taken care of in my yard along with I needed to put up a shed for my lawnmower and all of my lawn equipment. I actually thought about recording a video of that process. That would have been really cool but I was kind of uncomfortable filming my yard and everything you know but with that being said i am really sorry that i've been gone for so long not quite keeping up with the community tab if anyone is unaware i do post in what's called the community tab here on youtube you can actually go to my channel there's a tab called community and that's where i kind of update people on what's going on if you have not heard from me in a while in this case, I didn't really keep up to date with the community tab, and I'm really sorry about that. About two weeks ago, I did leave a message saying that I was coming back, everything was all good, and uh, yeah, I, I try my best, but I'm a really busy person a lot of the times. But with that being said, I really appreciate the support, the concern, the daily messages that people have sent me uh, asking if I was okay. I, I really appreciate all of you, and I'm really sorry for worrying anyone. I don't want to put you guys through any stress like that i'm horribly sorry but with that being said i do appreciate every single one of you i hope all you guys are not mad at me i probably am gonna have to i'm probably going to have to start building my youtube channel from the ground up again it's probably going to have a very low interaction but that's okay i'm having fun with this and as always if you found any of these clips interesting links are in the description down below and with that being said have a good day